Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. In every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. On the road marked with suffering, there was pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, oh blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. Blessed be your name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Well, good morning, Discover Church. You may have a seat. Great to see you all. All of you joining us online. Thanks for joining us online. And we're glad that you're here with us as well. So when you came in this morning, there were um, the note sheet and the announcement sheets on the back table. So we'll be up moving around here a little bit if you want to go back and grab one if you didn't get a chance. And they're available to you online as well. But just a few things coming up here at Discover Church. Uh, the food pantry will be uh, June 25th. Um, and you guys are rocking it. Amy, thanks for leading that for us. You guys are absolutely knocking it out of the park, serving our community uh, that needs some help through this time. Ladies, ladies Bible study, that's back on for Mondays at 1 o'clock. Uh, I notice there's a basket back there for the secret sisters too, so if you have a card to drop in there, feel free to do that. Uh, also, uh, adopt a flower bed. Um, so if you or your family, we have several flower beds around the church, and um, if you want to adopt one of those and take care of it, come over every week or so and pull weeds and water and just take care of that. Let us know, um, and you can take care of that. And there's several you can see on there, several things coming up as well. 
Um, also, it's time for the tithe and offering. And in the past, in the tithe and offering, we'd pass a basket, so we're not doing that now. But you can see back on the back table, there's a box for your tithes and offerings, your connection card. Just feel free to drop that in there at some point in time. And if you're watching online, feel free to go ahead and give online through the church's website. Um, a lot of people doing that. A lot more people are giving online. That's pretty cool. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for continuing the tithe and offering so we can continue to do the ministry that we do. Let's open in a word of prayer. So, Father, we come to you this morning. And as we worship you, we pray, Lord, that you would receive that worship and that your blessings would come down upon us. And as we look into your word later here this morning, that you allow it to touch our hearts and touch our minds, to, to change us from the inside out. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So with that, why don't we go ahead and stand back up and continue to worship. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. God, let your glory go on and on. The impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done.
love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness. Kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. My Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. Heroes and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Take me as to find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. Fill my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I. Down 
be seated. Well, welcome once again to Discover Church. We're glad you're here. And once again, welcome to all of you that are joining us online. We're glad you joined us online as well. And uh, I was going to say welcome to our campus in Central Ohio, but I'm not going to do that because we don't actually have one. But to all my friends in Central Ohio, welcome to you as well because you say I don't give you a shout out. So there's your shout out. But uh, so good to see all of you here this morning, and we're in our series, we're in our series, This Is Us, and this is the fifth week, the final week, and then we'll go to someplace else from here next week, but um, so let's just kind of review what we talked about so far, because a lot of what we've talked about so far, it's been online only, and so just to get everybody caught up, the first week, you may recall, we talked about why do we have church, what, why church, what is the purpose of church? And we found out that the purpose of church is that God created us to be a part of his family. And the church is a family. It's not a building. It's not an organization. But the church are a group of people. And God created us to be a part of his family, a spiritual family. So our church, a church, is a spiritual family. And it's a place for where we can grow and become all that God created us to be. We found that out in the first week. The second week, we talked about why on earth am I here? Why am I here? Because you're not just here to take up space. God created you for a purpose. And God created you to love you and for you to love him back. And he created you with significant value. And he wants that from you. And we talked about the five purposes of life. So you can go back and check that out. Week three, we talked about focusing on what matters most. What are the things that matter most for us? And we talked about true, being a truly Christian church and what all that means. But we also talked about every church has its own uniqueness, its own personality, maybe its own DNA. And we talked about Discover's uniqueness and personality and DNA. And we talked about um, deliberate growth, that we're into deliberate growth, deliberate personal growth for each individual. We're into inspiring kids and teenagers to have an inspiring ministry so that they can find out 
at a young age that Jesus can be their forever friend. And when they are old, they will not depart from that. And we talked about superior discipleship, that we each need to be growing closer to Jesus, becoming his disciples and growing to spiritual maturity to where we can teach at some point in time. And then we talked about connecting and fellowship, that we connect together in fellowship in large groups like we are today, small groups, spiritual friendships, ministry teams. And we need to connect through these fellow through fellowship, connect with these groups, a place to be known, to know and be known, to encourage and be encouraged. And then we talked about the letter O was outrageous generosity, that we're called to outrageous generosity with our time and our talent and our treasure and with our opportunities. We talked about victorious faith. We talked about being empowered for ministry, that every member is to be a minister in some form or some capacity. And then we talked about R, which was revolutionary love. And that revolutionary love is for us to love the way that Jesus loved, to love that same way. And when we spread that revolutionary love, it'll change the world. Well, it'll change our life, change those around us and those around them, and ultimately change the world. And then last week, we talked about growing your faith. And in growing your faith, we found out to grow your faith, you need to know Jesus. You need to know God's word. You need to know him in an intimate way because when you know him, you can start to trust him. And when you start to trust him and see him at work in your life, you can have faith. We also found out that part of growing our faith means we grow our faith through circumstances that test us. And we don't like to be tested like that. But we found out that God doesn't test very much of our life. But the one area that does get tested is our faith. And it gets tested through Dreams, dreaming big dreams. We talked about if God's going to be your partner, dream big dreams and watch what God can do in your life and the life of those around you. And we talked about that we grow our faith through delays. And we, you know, nobody likes delays, right? There's things that you want to have happen in your life and you're expecting those things to happen. You've prayed about that and you believe they're going to happen. And then it gets delayed and you can't figure it out. But it's in those times of delay that we need to have faith and grow our faith. Our faith is being tested. We found out that our faith is tested through our dollars, through our dollars, and that we need to learn to give in faith. And the reason that our faith grows and our faith is tested through dollars is that God's looking for people that can handle true riches, the true riches of his kingdom. And the way he measures that is to find out how you do with what you do with worldly riches. And if you're faithful in the small things, he's going to give you even more and bigger assignments for him to do, for you to do here on earth for his kingdom. And then we found out that we, our faith is tested and it grows during times of difficulties. And we all have difficulties and none of us like the difficulties that we go through, but our faith is being tested. And we found out that we shouldn't be surprised by that. Found out in 1 Peter that he said, don't be surprised. Why are you surprised by this? Because it's testing your faith and it's being purified as gold goes through fire. So we talked about growing our faith. And this morning we're going to talk about open to serve. Open to serve. You see, to be able to serve, to be able to serve, you have to know who you are and why you do the things, why we do the things we do, why we exist. We have to know that to know why and how and what is the right way to serve that matches up to who we are. So who is Discover Church? Do you know this here? This is kind of our vision statement, right? Did I get that right? Vision statement, right? There's a different, huh? Mission. I always get those messed up. It's one of the statements we have about what we do around here. <laughs> it's either a vision or a mission, but it's a mission from my told. All right, so anyway, Discover Church exists to bring people into relationship with Christ. We do that by helping people discover who God is, discover their purpose, and discover authentic community. That's what we're about, helping people discover God, discover purpose, and discover community. So let's break this down a little bit. See, all people are looking for something in their life. They're walking around, they're looking for something in their life. Maybe they're looking for love, they're looking for significance, they're looking for some, something. And a lot of people are walking around with a piece like it's missing. 
It's like a piece of the puzzle is missing in their life. There's this hole in their life. And they look for so many different things to, to find that piece. To, they're looking at all kinds of different things to, to fill that missing piece in their life. And they keep looking, they keep looking, they keep looking. And that hole that is missing in their life can only be filled by Jesus Christ. It's only by having a relationship with Jesus and understanding that he is your Savior and your Lord will that peace that's missing in your life be filled. And people are looking for all kinds of different ways to fill that peace that's missing in their life. And there's only one way, and that way is to have Jesus be a part of your life. And when you have Jesus part in your life, it brings wholeness and it brings completeness. If you don't believe that, ask so many people around here to say, yeah, I was walking around, a peace was missing, I gave my life to Jesus, and now I have completeness and I have wholeness in our life. That's why we want to tell people about having a relationship with Jesus Christ and having Jesus be the leader of their life because they're walking around un incomplete and unwhole and they need to have wholeness and completeness in their life. So that's kind of the discovering who God is. We've got to discover who God is. Do you know, are you realize, do, you, do you realize there's a lot of misconceptions about who God is? Did you know that? Because we who are followers of Christ have found that God is a loving God that cares deep about us, that created us to love us, to be in a relationship with us. He wants us to talk to him, and he wants us to listen to him. We've realized that. But there's a lot of misconceptions about who God is. And so to know who something is or to know what something is, you also have to know what it is not. You have to know what it's not. So I came up with a few of the things that Jesus or that God is not. So first of all, God is not some type of cosmic killjoy. That's a misconception. He doesn't want us walking around not having fun and being serious all the time. Right? Because if you spend just a little bit of time with me, we're going to have fun. Might be at your expense or my expense, but we're going to have fun. Several years ago, my kids were going through all the things with their grandparents that, and they were talking about food, the things that they make, and, and you know, and mom makes this, their favorite dish that each of these grandparents and parents make, and then they came to me, and they kind of looked at me. It's like, yeah, you know, if you want scrambled eggs, I'm the man right here. That's, the, that's what I am. And they looked at me, but this is what they did. They looked at me, and they looked at me, and they stopped, and they said, hmm, dad makes boring stuff fun. Isn't that a great way to be known? I said, on my headstone, when, I, you know, when I'm 150 and die, put it on there, right? I make boring stuff fun because I think God is a God of fun. He's not a killjoy, a cosmic killjoy. If God weren't a God of fun, he never would have created the camel. <laughs> God's going through creation, right? And he's deciding what he's creating. He says, hey, fellas, come over here. What's that, God? He goes, that's a camel, right? I mean, he's fun. He's a God of fun. So God is not a cosmic killjoy. God is not a cosmic sheriff just waiting for you to mess up so he can send a lightning bolt down from heaven to zap you back into place. He's not a cosmic sheriff. Too often we think I have to walk right, I have to talk right, I have to dress right, I have to be right. Because if I talk right, walk right, be right, do right, I don't have to worry about God. But if I get out of the line just a little bit, bam, lightning bolt to get me back into place. And he does horrendous things to people to get them back in place. He's not a cosmic sheriff. God is not a cosmic wimp. He's not a wimp. He's not a God that you can bully around to get your way, to boss around, to, to, to nag until you get your way because he's some kind of wimp and can be molded into what you want him to be. He's not a cosmic wimp. We see in the Bible that he is a God of strength and power. He is a warrior. So he's not a cosmic wimp. He's also not a cosmic hermit. He's not a cosmic hermit that he kind of created this world and just kind of left and figured out you're kind of on your own. You don't need to come talk to me because I'm, you know, I'm in my cave somewhere. He's not a cosmic sheriff. He is approachable. As a matter of fact, he created you to love you. He created you to have a relationship with you. So he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to reach out to him, and he wants you to listen to him. 
And there's so much more we can talk about who God is and who God is not. So he wrote a book. Well, read the book. Read the book and you can find out who God is and, and who he is not. So that's discover God. We also want to talk about discover purpose. What is your purpose? What is, what is the unique purpose that God created you for? so that you can become all you can become, that you can add value to other people's life, that we worship him with the gifts and the talents that he's given us for a purpose. So I have to ask you, do you know your purpose? Do do you know why you were created? If not, that's why we're here, to help you walk through that process, to figure out why exactly you're here and what your purpose is. And we talk about discover community. We strive to create an authentic community without pretense, knowing that all are loved by God and also knowing that all have sinned and fallen short of God's perfect ideal. So we create this authentic community, to a place where you can love and be loved and encouraged and be encouraged to be known and to know others. Authentic community. So that's who we are. So how do we do this? How is it that we do all these things that we talk about. So here's the next statement. We do this by creating a church with non-judgmental environments for people to discover God, discover purpose, and discover community. So once again, I'll say that. We do this by creating a church with non-judgmental environments for people to discover God, discover purpose, discover community. Well, what does that mean? What that means is too often people go to church, not here, but they'll go to a church and they go to a church and they're immediately judged. They're judged by what they look like, what they're wearing, where they come from, what they're driving, what they're not driving. There's judgment that goes on by all kinds of different parameters, but we understand that everyone is at a different place in their journey in life and that everybody is at a different place in their journey to becoming like Christ, so we don't judge And mainly we don't judge people because we know we can be judged. We know that there's areas of our life that's still kind of flawed. But we're on this journey to become like Christ as well. We want other people to join us on that journey. And we know we haven't arrived yet. We're not there. So our environments, our large groups, our small groups, our spiritual friendships, our ministry teams, your one-on-one friendships that you have, all are going to be set up as a non-judgment zone. And here's the scripture that goes with this. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 through 6 says this, be wise, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So what's that mean? In the context of us, what's that mean? It says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. We have to be wise because we have to understand it is quite possible that the first and maybe the only interaction that outsiders, people outside of being a Christian, a follower of Christ, their first and maybe only interaction they'll have with Jesus is you as his representative. As his ambassador, that may be their first encounter that they've had with a truly, a true follower of Jesus Christ. So we got to be wise in the way we act towards outsiders. Because then it goes on and says we need to make the most of every opportunity. Whenever an opportunity, whatever opportunity we have to share about Jesus, we need to make the most of it. Make the most of it by being loving and being caring and being relevant to what's going on. So we need to make the most of every opportunity. And our conversations need to be full of grace. This is the non-judgmental part because we offer grace to others. Why? Because God offered grace to us. God offered grace to us, and because of that, we're going to offer grace to others. And the, the ultimate fulfillment of the grace that God gave to us was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So we offer grace. But that verse also goes on and says it's seasoned with salt. And although, although we are non-judgmental in our environments, we, we also tell the truth. 
We also want to offer up the truth because the people need to know the truth. They need to know the truth. It's interesting in the story of Jesus in John chapter 18. Jesus has been arrested. He's been kind of thrown around, beaten around a little bit. And so they take him to Pilate. Pilate is the uh, Roman governor, the Roman representative of that area. So they're going to take him and say, hey, this guy's done all these really bad things and you need to, you know, like take care of that. And so Pilate's trying to figure this out and he's having this conversation with Jesus and he keeps referring to Jesus as the king. They tell me you're, you're the king of the Jews and you're the king. Why won't you answer me? Jesus isn't answering. And then all of a sudden in verse 38, here's what Jesus answered to Pilate. You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Now catch this in verse 38, because here's here is what Pilate reacts. He says, What is the truth? I mean, I don't know exactly how he said that, but he says he retorted. So he wasn't asking the question. What is the truth? Like, I've heard so many different pl you know, places. There's all kinds of places that tell me what the truth is. There's a truth here, a truth there, a truth there, a truth everywhere. And Jesus said, I came to the world to testify of the truth. Pilate says, what is the truth? And that's the question that's been asked for thousands of years. What is the truth? If you go back into John chapter 14, Jesus answers that question too, and he says this, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus says, I am the truth, and we know people need the truth because they need the truth in their life. They need it to find healing for their hurts and their habits and the hang-ups and all the things that are going on in their life. While we don't judge, we are going to tell the truth. Because people need the truth. Doing our best to have an answer for every question or every thing that somebody might be. Doing our best to do that because it's about the truth. And the truth is found in Jesus. So, got the who and the how, now the what. Okay, I get that. That's who we are. That's how we do things. But what? What, what is my part in this? What, what is it that I should be doing now that I know this stuff or been reminded of this stuff. See, our part is about servanthood. Jesus said time and time again that he didn't come into this world to be served, but to serve others. One time was in Mark chapter 10, verse 40, 45. He says that, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom as many. See, we were made to serve as well. Just as Jesus came to serve, we were made to serve. And there's benefits to serving. So we're going to look at five benefits to be open to serve. If we're open to serve, here's five benefits that we'll see in our life by serving. The first one is, serving gives purpose to my life. Serving gives purpose to my life. See, God created you to serve. He created you to serve God and to serve others. He didn't just put you on this planet, didn't just put you on this earth to serve yourself. That's not why you're here. We are here to make a difference in the world. He put you on this world to serve in a capacity so that you can make this world a better place. Mark chapter 8 verse 35 says this, If you insist on saving your life, you will lose it. Catch that? If you insist on serving yourself alone, you'll lose it. Only those who throw away or give away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. Until you serve others, until you actually give your life away for God and for others, you won't know what it means to really live. You'll be living but you won't know what it really means. Serving others is what changes us from just existing on this planet to really living. And serving gives us a purpose for living. Second thing that serving does, it makes me more like Jesus. It makes me more like Jesus. When we are serving, we're becoming like Jesus because that's what Jesus was all about. 
time and time again, right? He said, I didn't come to be served. Another time was Matthew 20, 28. Jesus said, I did not come to earth to be served, but to serve and to give, to give my life as a ransom for many. So notice in that verse what he does there. He connects two words together, serve and give. I mean, those are the two words that are at the very essence of being a follower of Christ, at being a Christian, serve and give. If you want to be like Christ, serve and give, because that's what he was about. Serving and giving is also how we grow spiritually mature. If we want to grow in maturity and becoming like Christ and grow in spiritual maturity, the way we do that is by serving and giving. Seeing other people's needs and other people's hurts and other people's pains and saying, I can help with that. I can serve them. And I think everyone in here at some point in time has served someone that you knew could not return what you did for them. And those times and those days when you walk away from that type of service, you know what it really means to live because it makes you more like Jesus. Number three, third benefit of serving, serving is the highest use of my time. If you truly want to make a difference in the world, if you truly want to make a difference in the world, to really have an impact, to leave a legacy, to leave a great legacy, the highest and best use of your time is to serve God by serving others. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says this, <clears throat> Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your work in the Lord is never wasted. The work, the service that you give to the Lord is never wasted. You know, there's a lot of different ways to waste your time, isn't there? As a matter of fact, today, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call on each of you and you tell me how you wasted your time this, this week. And those online, just post it. That'll be fine. So... I thought about doing that. Wouldn't that be cool? (laughs) How cool would that be? How did you waste time this week? But we're not going to do that. Don't post. You don't have to post online. But so I thought of several ways that people waste time, though. One way that people waste time is binge watching all the seasons of The Highlander on Netflix. It's a waste of time. How many have ever done that? Huh, just me. Oh, you did? You watched The Highlander? I thought, you did too? Awesome. Kindred spirits. I was waiting to see back here my Reacher and John Wick fans. No, not so much? Yeah, that's kind of a waste of time. It was fun, but it was a waste of time. You know what else is a waste of time? Gossiping. Gossiping about other people. That's kind of a colossal waste of time. And I got to thinking about other things like planting flowers and then never watering them. That's kind of a waste of time. So that, yeah, that's there. I don't, someone else do that? No. Gonna, I, you know what, I just didn't get a no. For those watching online, I didn't just get a no, I got a no. So playing games, playing games on your iPad, that's a waste of time. It used to be Candy Crush. Is Candy Crush still a thing? That's still a thing. Tomb Blast, any Tomb Blasters out here? Yeah, you sit down and you think, I'll do this for five minutes, and then 35 minutes later, right, you said, oh, my gosh, I just spent 35 minutes playing games on my iPad. I got a very expensive toy. But that's what we do. We come up with all kinds of innovative ways to waste our time. But one thing, one thing we know for sure that is not a waste of our time is when we serve, when we serve God by serving other people, acts of service, And it's quite possible some of those acts of service that we do, nobody will ever see you do it. But do you know who does? God sees it. God sees it, and he says it is never wasted. Your service is never wasted. Number four, serving is the secret of greatness, the secret to greatness. Do you want to be great? Do you want to be great? then stop living for yourself. If you want to be great, then give your life away to others. In our country, in our military, in our country, we award the Medal of Honor to people who don't live for themselves. 
In our society, they are the great ones. They are the ones who gave their life or gave up their life for something greater than themselves. And it's that type of greatness. Those are the true heroes in our society that achieved greatness. And Jesus said in Matthew 20, 26, whoever wants to become great, catch this, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Well, that's certainly not what the world tells us. The world doesn't tell us that, but Jesus says, if you want to be great, you got to serve. True greatness is found in servanthood. Greatness is not found in the job you have, the house you live in, how much money you have, how many home runs you can hit in a year, how many points you can score on average in a basketball game, how many touchdown passes you can throw. It's not found there. It's not even found in how many contenders that you can take on in the boxing ring. That's not greatness. Greatness is found in servanthood, true greatness. The greatest leaders are the ones who serve. And we kind of know that, but here's, here's one of the problems that happens as people go through life, maybe even as we go through life. And the problem is we go through life and say, yes, that's what I'm about. I want to make the world a better place. I want to make a difference in the world, and I'm here, and I'm going to serve people, and I serve them, and I want to help people. And we all start off that way. But too often over time, we go from service to serve us. And it's different, whether it be a politician or a journalist or a business person or a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or a pastor or your honorable butcher, bakers, and candlestick makers. We get there, and all of a sudden the values change, and the values change, and then the attitude change, and when those values change, it says, I'm going to get as much as I can for myself at almost any cost. And we go from an area of thinking that I'm going to do this for public service to the area where I want the public to serve me. And we have to watch out for that. Because that's kind of the world's way. And then, you know, we're out mixing with the world. And we say, greatness, yeah, greatness. I want to be true greatness. That means I need to serve. And you're serving and you're serving and you're serving. And all of a sudden, maybe the world starts to enter and filter in, you know, into our life and influence us more than we're influencing the world. And I know how difficult that is. I run a business. I work in the world. I get it. So just watch out for that because serving, serving is the key to greatness. If you want to be great, learn how to be the servant of all. Number five, serving results in rewards in heaven. It results in rewards in heaven. <clears throat> That's important to know, isn't it? That's important to know that based on your serving here on earth will also result in rewards in heaven. All right, I was told this is the appropriate way. <laughs> you see how difficult that is when you got this? I was told I cough in my hands too much. <clears throat> so anyway, sorry for that break. So you're serving here on earth. You're serving here on earth will result in, in rewards in heaven. Um, that's, especially, that's especially meaningful. It's especially meaningful if the services that we do, the services that we offer to people are more menial tasks, right? Tasks that don't get a lot of publicity, maybe even task and service that we do that's not even seen by anybody else, unknown things. That service will be rewarded in heaven. Colossians 3.23 says this, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So whatever you do, work at it with all your heart like you're working on to the Lord. You you are working for the Lord. You, you, are, you are representative of Jesus. You're, you're not working for your human bosses, your human supervisors. You're working for the Lord. You're not even working for me. You're working for the Lord. Work at it. Serve like you're working and serving the Lord no matter what the job is that you're doing. Your real boss is Jesus. 
And here's the promise that Jesus gives. Here's a promise Jesus gives us about rewards. Check this out in Mark chapter 10, verse 29. You can be sure, Jesus saying this, not some slick back salesman, Jesus. You can be sure that anyone who gives up home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or land for me and for the good news will be rewarded. In this world, in this world, they will be given a hundred times as many houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and pieces of land, though they also will also be mistreated. And in the world to come, they will have eternal life. So this is Jesus saying this. This isn't a promise from someone who can't keep a promise. This is from Jesus. Jesus is saying, Whatever you give up to serve me, to serve my kingdom, to serve my church, to serve my cause, to spread the good news, whatever it is that you give up, you're going to get 100 times back in return. That's a 10,000% return. There's not a financial institution in this world that will give that to you. Well, there's some that might promise it, but you're like, yeah, okay, I'm taking my money and going somewhere else. Jesus is saying that. There's a reward. There's a reward. So what should I do? What should I strive to do? What should I strive to become? What is my goal? See, my goal, and I hope your goal, is to improve my servanthood. Improve my servanthood. Wherever I'm at today, to get better, to improve it. Romans chapter 12, verses 11 and 12 says this, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. He is saying, listen, listen, listen. Don't be lazy. That's what he's saying. Don't be lazy. Keep your zeal for serving the God. Keep your spiritual spiritual fervor. Don't, don't go cold on me. Stay hot. Don't make excuses. Don't let the distractions of things in the world pull you away from what you're supposed to be doing. Keep hot. Keep at it. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in those times of affliction and always be faithful in the times of prayer. And it's important to know that us as followers of Christ, we don't, we don't serve out of some type of threat. We don't serve out of some sort of guilt. We don't serve out of pressure or stress or shame. There's two reasons and two reasons that we as followers of Christ serve God and serve other people. One is out of gratitude. Gratitude. Because we're grateful for all the things that God through his son Jesus Christ has done for us. So it's out of gratitude that we serve God and we serve others. How could we not after the things he's done for us? <coughs> and it's also out of joy. This joyful hope, the joyful hope that they talk about. Be joyful in hope. So we serve out of gratitude and we serve out of joy. And the question is, how can I improve my servanthood attitude from gratitude and joy, serving God and serving others? Because there's rewards there. It leads to a life that's a much better life than not serving, than, than being selfish. And I think we all know that. I think we all know that in times when we serve people, not expecting anything back. It's a great time. It's really living. And when we're selfish, we just don't really feel good about ourselves. So how do we do this? So here's my big ask. Here's my big ask of you. My big ask of you, whether you're here, whether you're watching online, here's the big ask. Join me. Would you join me in being open to serve? Being open to serve. Serve in a ministry here. If you're not already, find a place here at Discover Church where you can serve in ministry, where you can serve God and serve others. So serve. Meet regularly. Join me in meeting regularly here in large groups and small groups and ministry teams and spiritual friendships, whatever that looks like for you. But don't neglect that. Don't neg neglect meeting with your Christian brothers and sisters. We've got to do that. And tell intentionally. Tell intentionally about who Jesus is. Tell your friends. Tell your friends about what Jesus has done in your life, but do it intentionally. And maybe you're a little uncomfortable with that still. I get it. That's kind of an uncomfortable conversation to have at times. 
So another way you can tell intentionally is to influence and invite. You have influence in your friends' lives. They think you're mostly normal, right? You have influence, influence and invite. Influence, influence and invite them here. Because if you're a little comfortable telling them about Jesus, I'll tell them about Jesus. Influence and invite, tell intentionally. And grow deeper individually. Grow yourself, grow in spiritual maturity. Take the time, invest the time. Read your Bible and pray every day, and Joel. No Bible, no little kid Bible stuff. Isn't that a song? Read your Bible and pray every day and you'll grow, grow, grow. No one sang that in children's church? Maybe I made that up in my head then. I don't know. Maybe it's totally made up. Oh, well. But read your Bible and pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. That's, I mean, I heard that song one time. But anyway, but grow deeper. In t- be, be, you know, individually, you've got to put the effort in. I can't force you to grow. I mean, I have a role in that. We have a role in that as a church, but you have a role in it individually. So take that role seriously. And then praise always, worship. Always praise. Maybe sometimes turn the radio off when you're driving somewhere and just praise God. Just praise him. When you get up in the morning and before you go to bed at night, we at Discover Church, we're open to serve. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you so much. I do thank you. We are filled with gratitude. We are grateful for all that you've done in our lives. And it's out of that gratitude we want to serve you and serve your people and serve here on earth. And so help us to move forward in gratitude to to improve our servanthood. And it's out of our joyful hope, the joyful hope that, that, that we know that you'll take even the smallest act of service and turn it into something absolutely wonderful, that it could have an impact in somebody's life that would radically change, that would do something even greater than what we're doing for your kingdom. So, Lord, help us to to understand the benefits of serving you and to improve our servanthood. Help us to serve in ministry, to to not neglect meeting together regularly, to to tell intentionally, to influence and to invite and to take the time and make the effort for us to grow individually, more spiritually mature and know you more and more and to always praise you, to always be in an attitude of worship. So help us now, Lord, at Discover Church to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to our community, to our friends, to our family members, even to our enemies if we need to. Help us to do that, Lord, because we are open to serve. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, thanks for joining us online. Thank you for being here today. A couple of things this week, the midweek Bible study, 7 o'clock on Wednesday on Facebook. And then next Sunday will be Father's Day, right? I got that right because I'm expecting a present next week. So... um, or maybe two. I got two kids. Maybe I'll get two presents. Um, so next week is Father's Day. So we will talk about, we have a special Father's Day's message. You want to know what the title of it is? Because I said so. Isn't that perfect for Father's Day? So we'll look forward to seeing you all at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Make it a great rest of the week.